This episode of The Wine O'Clock Show proudly brought to you by the all-new X-Class, available now at Mercedes-Benz Sunshine Coast. Cheers. Welcome Cheers. to the Wine O'Clock Show. Oh, it's nice always Wine O'Clock. It's always Wine O'Clock somewhere. And I think you're probably on Wine O'Clock at the moment, coming back from just uh, coming back from Greece. Wine a month. <laughs> now this show obviously goes Let's out. Don't be confused with one wine a month. <laughs> just wine month. Wine. It goes out normally at one o'clock. It does. Do we Usually, tell everybody that it's very early in the morning right now? Yeah, it's or? very early in the morning. <laughs> we are drinking very Nothing early. It's not like five o'clock. A, a sharp cav sav to cut through Colgate <laughs> in your mouth, I reckon. <laughs> Nothing gets the toothpaste off yeah. your teeth like a cab sav. Nothing <laughs> washed out a bacon and egg roll <laughs> like a cab sav. Your show, True Story, came out last night. Mm-hmm. And I'm. It, it's probably smashed records like it did last season. You guys had two million people a week watch your show. That must have been exciting. That was eventually. So just in case anyone sees the ratings when this comes out and goes, oh, wait a second, they didn't get two million. Um, I won't do two million on the night. No. Those figures ended up being like after we watched it on catch up and stuff. Catch up. But it was really, like, we're always blown away for anything we do on TV that one person would watch it. So, <laughs> you know, we don't want to poo-poo any figures. Yes, I mean, but particularly, I mean, there's more reason to watch True Story than there ever was to watch Gap Year because that was just Hamish and I being idiots. This is like the greatest stories you can find around a country. You're so. listening to everyone else be idiots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, pretty much. We're counting times 15 years ago when they were idiots and, yeah. and we're a sympathetic ear. Yeah. We know how easy it is to be idiots. Back in the day, you, you met in uni. Mm-hmm. Did you ever think, when you were sitting around talking, probably drinking wine beer at mm-hmm. uni, that you would be here today? No one told us that there was a career path available where you could I, just be idiots. Yeah. I predicted that we'd be doing this show. Well, I mean, we dreamt. We said, you know, could we one day be doing uh, the one o'clock show? But, I mean, it's just, <laughs> you, you can't get Not too this show, you yeah. can't get too carried away. <laughs> yeah. um, no, we, I reckon it took literally years for it to. It probably still hasn't completely sunk in because you always have that feeling like, all right, well, this is fun, but eventually we'll have to grow up and this will be over. Mm, yeah. mm. So tell me a little bit about True Story for those who the other millions that haven't watched it yeah. yet. Yeah, um, twenty million. Yeah, twenty, <laughs> yeah, 20 million. Get on, million. Get on that. We're trying to get the whole of Australia. <laughs> what is True Story all about? Well, yeah, essentially, we went on the search for the straightest Australia's funniest, greatest true stories, mm. and uh, they sit down and tell Hamish and I that story for the very first time. And so you're seeing. Uh, sorry, our, they tell us. We hear it for the first time. They've probably told it like fifty times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you're seeing Hamish and I react. To this story, and then uh, at the same time, we've used uh, great performers from around Australia to reenact their lives. So they get their own mini biopic, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think last season you were saying you had about 1,600 people mm. apply, and this year it's like 8,000 stories. Did yep. you sift through those stories? No, or? We, we can't because we're. Your reaction has to we be have to hear genuine. It exactly. time. So yeah. I suppose cynically people could say, well, that just gets you out of four months of work, but that's not why we do it. Mm. Do you find your interviews are better if you tell the people the questions? Some of them I do. Like, some people ask for them. Yeah. So I do you ha- think it's you know, better or not? I think it does because they're prepared. Right. Yeah. But yeah. Different, to a, this, you know, different to being prepared for a question rather than the whole point of a great story. I mean, you don't want to know a film plot before you go and see the film. No. The whole point of a great tale is the suspense, mm. is, yeah. is if there's a twist and a turn and another layer and a surprise. I mean... I don't want to sound too obvious here, but one of the fun things about surprises is you don't know what's coming up. Yeah. And we want to be surprised. And, and it's, you know, at the, at the heart of a great story, there is often a surprise mm. or there's an unexpected event happening. And that's what we, we're trying to work so hard mm. to preserve. What would be your true story? If you could tell your true story, what would it be? Probably the time I hit 5,000 runs in county cricket. <laughs> yeah, he's got a knack for lying. <laughs> my yeah, true story none of mine would make it past the research <laughs> stage because they would then rip them to shreds. Uh, my f- true story would be about a mate that constantly lies. Yeah. <laughs> no one will believe it. <laughs> Do you guys sit at home and watch yourself on television and sit there and go, mm. Yep, in slow-mo. <laughs> and I, I get a special edit where all the other noises cut out except for my probably. No, um, I don't. I actually don't like watching myself at all. I do. I do watch you? the shows yeah. back. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, because you can get a really different feel off. When you're trying to put a show together, 
you can sit there in your edit suite and go, okay, this is what the show is, and it mm. can be completely different without the ad breaks or the emotion of people leading in. You know, say if we're off the back of the block, what are people feeling, and, and how you start a program in that way. I mean, this is all quite boring and the science <laughs> of it all, but I I like checking to see where we thought a show like a show and a feel and emotion at any one point. Is it, and does it align mm. with how it sits with all the ad breaks in and, and, and those yeah. type of things? Sorry, I like the show. Mm. I just don't like watching myself. <laughs> yeah. We've done so many things over the years. You, you, you've topped the charts, I guess, in the radio industry. You're number one on iTunes for uh, iPod, uh, yeah, iCut, podcast. podcast, that's yeah. it. I, no, I think they're called iPod iCast. <laughs> <laughs> iCast. Yeah. Is there anything that you guys haven't done that you want to do next? Yeah, I mean, Ando's always been begging me to do some sort of tandem bike around the world bike ride. It's his passion. Yeah, um, I love that. It's all he, it's all he talks about. So mm. after that, I think I think we'll be done. There's certain there's certain aspirations you have as a kid mm. that you know you can't do, like play for Australia in the cricket. <laughs> but we've actually found a way to cheat that because then if you get into the entertainment industry, it's, it's all about you playing know. pretensies. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, you can't play professional cricket, but then if you do like a radio show, yeah. you can meet professional cricket players and as a laugh, they can bowl at you yeah. and then they probably go soft on you and then you can hit them for six. Yeah. And then you're like, well, this is even better than playing professional <laughs> cricket. So we sort of found a way to cheat the system mm and get to live out our ultimate fantasy. Yeah, mm. which and is we'll really And continue fun. to try and cheat the system for as mm. long as we can. What was your favourite episode from this season of True Story? Uh, no question. It's probably coming up. Um, they're all they're all so different. There's and that's lot, what, Yeah, there's a lot of winners for different categories. Yeah, it's it's kind of, with this show and the fact that they're, they're, the stories come from all walks of life, like we've got a thriller, we've got a mystery, we've got a horror, we've got a romance, mm. we've got action, like, so, it's kind of like saying, what's your favourite film? It's hard to go, well, I like this comedy, but I also loved Braveheart. Mm. You know? So they, they all kind of target different emotions. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's one, which is Stevens, which is probably our more action-based. Yeah, I mean, it's, and it's cinematic. He's an amazing storyteller. Mm. But on top of that, like the actual contents of the story. Yeah. If, if you are judging it purely on story, where you go, have I ever heard a story like that before? I mean, that's true of all our stories, but Stevens especially kind of like r rises above mm. a little bit. And you're like, I just cannot believe that happened. Yeah. But the guy it happened to is sitting here telling us. And when you meet Steven on screen, you'll go, all right, I believe this guy. Yeah. He tells it with, mm. he was there and it happened to him. Yeah. I got to watch two um, previews, I think, the other night with Andy. Yeah. And, and I you think, saw Stevens. Have you yeah. seen Stevens? Yeah. Well, is that the number four episode? Yeah. Yes, my favourite so far. Yeah. Crazy, right? yeah. yeah. I mean, everyone's had a girlfriend's dad or a boyfriend's dad that doesn't like them, but no, I've never heard of a dad doing this to them. Well, it's funny because my dad run the prisons for Queensland, so oh, wow. I sort of related to this, yes, you know. Yeah. So you've got, like, you know, obviously he's a fairly tough big dad. Big six foot, you know, looks like a big biker. Your, your can be tough. dad was that dad. Yeah, can be tough when he needs to be. Yes. But did he ever do that to a boyfriend of yours? Well, they never got up the driveway. I can remember him standing there one day, just like looking down the driveway, and they go, yeah. I'm not going up there. <laughs> yeah, right. Stephen dared. <laughs> Stephen dared to any fan out what happens when you go up the driveway. Boys, do you want to play a little game? Well, we I love games. I'd love to. Right. When do we get to have some of this cheese? You can go for it. Oh, right. well, while I'm getting your paddle. I mean, I mean, sorry, of course. Eat, eat. Can I just say, I don't know if this is a wine-based game, um, but uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with, I to see we're drinking at Penfold's Canunga Hill here. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with the Ben Ford's Chinese... Uh, knockoffs. No. So in China, on on like on their um, eBay equivalent and Amazon equivalent, um, like on Alibaba, because Penfold is obviously such a lusted after brand in China and like it's an exclusive Australian brand. There's someone doing an exact same label except instead of Penfolds, it's Ben Ford. Ben Ford's. Ben Ford. Uh, which kind of makes us look like Ben Fordham did it, mm -hmm. but it's Ben Ford's and. I've got a mate that's travelling to China. I was like, just for comedy value, can you get me a few Ben Fords, right? So he talks to his Chinese mate who's over there, and the Chinese mate goes, no, do you want real Ben Fords or fake Ben Fords? Because <laughs> <laughs> now the Ben Fords been is, so good, is now. All these Aussies are buying Ben Fords because it's a funny knockoff. Oh, now they started making fake Ben Fords. So you've got like websites advertising, this is real fake Ben, ben Fords, <laughs> not fake, fake Ben Fords. That's great. <laughs> Boys, it's never have I ever. Have you played? Uh, mm. Yes, yes, have played. Awesome. It, well, it's traditionally a drinking game, so we've come yes. to the right place. I know. It's okay. Good stuff. 
Hamish. Um, even though I just heard how crunchy these oh, no, are when gonna... Andy ate it. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I have never, and okay. there's no uh, lying in it, never have I ever. And if there's okay. a fun little story that goes along with it, we like to hear it too. Okay. Ready? It well, depends what the question's, whether the story <laughs> comes out. This is your true story. Yeah. <laughs> never have I ever kissed someone of the same sex. Um, um yeah. Andy and I have kissed. Yeah. Really? Tongue? Yeah. Yep. Shut up. And I kissed Jack, our um, panel operator on, the, mm. on our radio show. Yeah, I mean, Maybe. Hamish and I kiss most nights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the only part of mine. I've never almost not. <laughs> <laughs> never have ever waxed a part of my body into a weird shape. <coughs> uh, well, oh! we did a, um, a, wax, a wax race, a Brazilian race, where we were in Brazil, in Rio, mm. and we both had a hut each, and the, we had to go out and convince strangers to wax To us. rip wax off us. And so, so by default, it became a very weird shape. <laughs> yeah, were. and uh, yeah, we were kind of the most splotchy type of waxing all over you can our imagine. bodies. Yeah. Oh, never have I ever gotten a tattoo I regretted. <laughs> no. Love all mine. Do you? Have you got any? Tons. <laughs> yeah, I love all mine as well. <laughs> and he's got one that's off my face. I drew it. <laughs> <laughs> it's on his butt. That's yeah. his foot. <laughs> the, ankle. the butt of the leg. <laughs> <laughs> never have I ever sent a rude photo or raunchy text to the wrong person. <clears throat> that cracker went down the um, wrong way, didn't it? Never have. I don't, I don't think, think I think oh mine go. I, think I, I double I, check where mine go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we hope you'll go to the one person, mm. Hamish. Oh, well, I mean, I've, I've got a check in history. And me as well, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Never have I ever dropped something in the toilet and used my hand to retrieve it. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. What have we dropped? Oh, I've done this multiple times. I uh, dropped a poo in there once. <laughs> <laughs> got it out, and then I was like, oh, hang on, that goes in there. Oh, oh, that belongs there. Um, what else is in there? I mean, sunny phones, 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 yeah, phones, yeah, yeah. phones. Yeah. Oh yeah. God, we let them go down the toilet. Never have I ever Googled myself. Um, I have. Oh, we've, <laughs> and I've Googled Andy many times. <laughs> see if there's any dirt on it. Yeah. <laughs> Never have I ever congratulated someone who actually wasn't pregnant. No, I've done that. Oh, I think I've done that. Oh. I mean, I know you're not meant to, but yeah. somehow you do. And how, yeah. do you, how do you come back from that? Yes, I yes. went with, how are you feeling? <laughs> so it wasn't like, it was, full, it was like, oh my God, how are you feeling? And they went, good. And I was like, all right. And then that was kind of, she knew that I was suggesting that she was pregnant. Yeah. Uh, so it wasn't all, it wasn't an all in. I, yeah, <clears throat> I was able to cover mine as well. I, it was someone that I don't see really ever, mm. but I'd heard, I knew they were pregnant and I said, congrats, but they'd had the baby. Oh, oh. But it's, I could still then <laughs> yeah, yeah. dovetail my congrats into, yes, it, for yeah. having it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. But I, I know I meant congrats. You're still pregnant. Because <laughs> I think you're still pregnant. I thought you were pregnant. <laughs> Never have ever locked yourself out of your apartment or house in nothing but your underwear. Oh, no, I haven't done, no. haven't done that. No? I've done no. That. no. Never have ever stolen something. Um, Do hearts count? <laughs> <laughs> Just a loser. <laughs> All right, last one. Hamish never baby steal what on, that? on the radio. Uh, yeah, what did I make you steal? You had to go get a soft drink from the Italian restaurant. Little spaghetti bar downstairs. <laughs> <Did you go laughs> oh, that's right. I did you go back shopping? afterwards and? Because I, I oh, yeah, Andy I'd, went back like you know, tried to give him a thousand dollars. I'd never <laughs> stolen in my in uh, like growing <laughs> up. I'd never like pinched anything. And Hamish said, "You've got to, you've got to do it." And the listeners were like, "Yeah, just one time, like for the adrenaline." Yeah. And so I went down to the uh, the little spaghetti bar, and, and I distracted them while Andy nicked a, a probably the worst thing you can, can shoplift. It was like a bottle, glass bottle. So it's like, it's like three dollars. <laughs> It's very awkward to shoplift a giant a glass bottle of coke. I was so nervous. And the like the bang for buck's terrible. <laughs> yeah. It's not gonna make an Ocean's Eleven film, I'll but, tell but you. But then I have no qualms uh, sneaking behind other cars to get out of car parks under the boom gate. So oh. that's kind of stealing. Not that's stealing. stealing. But then not how do you get back out? Because that isn't it like license plate rec recognition now? I don't so I think they say that, but I don't think we ever been, yeah. Never have ever snooped through my partner's phone without them knowing. Nah. 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 Boys. That's, that's, yeah. So trusty. We got good partners. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>I grew up in? Uh, a house in Glen Waverley. The first thing I do when I wake up is? Stare in disbelief at the clock. <laughs> if I could be better at anything, it would be? Uh, probably backflips. <laughs> I'm at my happiest when? I am eating a giant pasta. Really? <laughs> I was too honest. <laughs> when I'm not working, I am? Working out, baby.
Uh, we... <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. Work out more. <laughs> Most people don't know that I? Um, am a lot shorter than I look. No, I'm a lot taller than I look. Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I was growing up, I wanted to be? Gynecologist. <laughs> but I, I mean, because it was the biggest word I knew. And then I actually found out what it was and realised I'd just been going around telling everyone, now I'm going to be a gynecologist. And everyone went to my mum, what have you been <laughs> telling this kid? I couldn't live without? Oxygen. My greatest achievement is? Um, Andy. Aww. Mentoring. <laughs> yeah, mentoring exactly. a young kid off the streets. <laughs> my most annoying habit is? Telling everyone I mentor Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh out loud when? Andy's around. My protege. Oh, I'm back in the old habit. <laughs> you two love each other so much. It's so cute. Uh, my hidden talent is? Uh, probably archery. No, uh, Chadwin. No, archery is very hidden. Haven't found it yet. <laughs> <laughs> what emoji do you use most? Thumbs up. It's very easy. It's yeah. like a reflex. And what hashtag, hashtag best describes you? Um, oh, sorry. Hashtag sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. All right, are we ready for Andy? Yeah. Okay. Right. Andy, I grew yes. up in? In Canterbury, Canterbury, in Melbourne. The first thing I do when I wake up is? Have a shower. If I could be better Actually, at that's not true. Um, Beck pee. always tells me to put the blinds up, and so I do that. Very obedient. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I stand up. <laughs> yeah. If I could be better at anything, it would be? Uh, golf. Mm. I'm at my happiest when? Uh, Hanging out with Haim, doing our show. When you're not working, I am? Playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. Uh, surf. Mm. Yeah. We've been, Hamish and I both talked about how surfing would be a cool thing to surf tell people that you can do. You yeah, when, um, we get, when we get a bit of time. I think the idea of telling people I'm a surfer more than actually surfing. Do you know what? It's for three years down the track yeah. where you can say to people, oh, I was having a surf on the weekend and... Yeah. Like, that's a great sentence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're not talking about surfing the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Most people don't know that I? Um, uh, play in a band. Do you? Mm. What do you it play? It works. Most yeah. people don't yeah. know. Yeah. I play the trumpet. <laughs> yeah. Why is that funny? Okay. <laughs> Cut that bit out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the trumpet's thinking... <laughs> still the coolest instrument. <laughs> it's all the babes. <laughs> that's it, man. Yeah. I'm thinking like guitar, drums. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I do it all at the same time. I'm like Dick Van Dyke from Mary Poppins. Oh, more cool, <laughs> cool references that get the babes. When I was growing up, I wanted to be. Um, what did I want to be? I wanted to be an accountant. Boring. He was, oh. going, he was going to come work at my <laughs> gynecolo gynecological firm. <laughs> How hurtful to all the accountants out there. I think you're very interesting. Oh dear, I couldn't live without. Um. Water. Water and oxygen. Mm. Two very good sources. We've named most of the planet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My most annoying habit is? Uh, I'm uptight. I like things tidy. Really? Yeah. Mm. I laugh out loud when? Uh, when doing our podcast. Mm. Mm. My hidden talent is? Um, <laughs> was the trumpet <laughs> for about three minutes and three can't thirty seconds. Can't say trumpet. Don't uh, say the trumpet. I can play the didgeridoo. There you go. Uh, if you could go back and give yourself, your 15 year old self, some advice, what would it be? Um, don't play trumpet. <laughs> don't, play. <laughs> don't play trumpet, no. I would say, guys, people are going to tease you about the trumpet. Double down. That hanged up. <laughs> yeah. Right about 2030, it's going to become the coolest instrument ever. What emoji do you use most? Fist pump. Mm. And what hashtag best describes you? Uh, uptight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, trumpet for life. Yeah. It's, it's, if you look on Twitter, it's got a heaps of, <laughs> heaps of mentions. Hashtag Trumpet for Life. <laughs> Guys, cheers. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And good luck uh, with the, this season of True Story. Thank That's you fun. very much.